What's going on YouTube? I'm your host Joss. Welcome back to Top 10 Beyond the Screen. It's tradition around here for me to handpick some comments and do some comment shoutouts at the end of each video, so make sure you stick around for that. And if you like what we do, make sure you follow the BTS team on Instagram. Our links are all down below. As for today's list, we are talking all about interviews. I want to hear from you. Tell me down in the comments if you've had an interview go horribly wrong. Celebrities get interviewed all the time, and although it's not the same as our job interviews, it can still go sour in front of the entire world. Some celebrities have done an interview that basically derailed their career. Let's see who some of these people are with today's list of top 10 terrible interviews that destroyed a celebrity's career. At number 10 is Katherine Heigl. We gotta be honest here and say there's probably a few interviews that affected her career, but one back in 2008 pretty much landed her on Hollywood's blacklist. She took the lead in the 2006 movie Knocked Up, and the movie, as well as her performance, was well received. Apparently not by the actress herself though, who opened up about how she felt about the movie later on in 2008. In the January issue of Vanity Fair, she said the movie was, I quote, a little sexist. It paints women as shrews, as humorless, and uptight and it paints the men as lovable, goofy, fun-loving guys. It exaggerated the characters and I had a hard time with it some days. Why is this how you're portraying women? This interview alone was enough for people in Hollywood to turn away from wanting to work with her, but it was sealed when she did another interview in 2008 where she dissed the writing in her show Grey's Anatomy. The actress has to figure out a way to either keep her mouth shut or just choose her words wisely. I'm not a rude person. I'm not an unkind or mean person. I would never go out of my way or consciously try to hurt anyone's feelings or, or make them feel bad or uncomfortable or not be professional and do my job. I like my job. And at number nine is Paula Abdul. Back in January 2007, the American Idol judge did an interview that went viral instantly. Throughout the video, which happened to be filmed, she slurred her words, wobbled, swayed, and spoke a bunch of nonsense, basically. News anchors from Q13 Fox News Live streamed Paula from New York to do a live interview with her, but because of how she was acting, they thought there was some sort of connection issue. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if she can hear us right now. They kept saying there must be a problem and that she can't hear them properly. But that wasn't really the case at all. Even when she did respond to their questions, she was acting like she was highly intoxicated. She was closing her eyes, slurring her words, just acting kind of all manic and weird. Later, she tried to explain, saying that there was a connection error at first, and they had a station from Alabama in her ear, along with the Fox News at the same time. But once they fixed it, she blamed the rest of the erotic behavior on just being tired. She said, fatigue and exhaustion just added to the whole thing looking so disoriented. But no alcohol and no drugs, absolutely no. The interview had a huge effect on her career. Two years later, she wasn't able to land another contract with American Idol. The world didn't see much of her for years until she snagged a judging role on So You Think You Can Dance. However, her career just hasn't been the same ever since. Sliding into the number eight spot on our list is Five Seconds of Summer. Back in 2015, the band managed to alienate both their fans and a lot of fellow artists and celebrities in just one interview. And since then, the world hasn't heard much of them since. In December 2015, their interview with Rolling Stone left people really pissed off. Michael Clifford, who admitted during the interview that he was hungover, bashed the American Music Awards, which they performed at the night before. He said the show was compromised and had, I quote, a lot of fake people. He also called out Justin Bieber and said he thinks he hates them for no apparent reason at all. Luke Hemmings from the band left fans and parents feeling disgusted after saying, when you put four young dudes on a tour bus playing theaters and arenas, you're going to have sex with a lot of girls, I guess. We had a good time. The interviewer awkwardly joked back, asking if they slept with multiple girls in one night or at the same time. And he responded with, I feel like I shouldn't say. You can say the possibility of that is high. People were pretty repulsed by their interview and things just haven't been the same for their stardom since that day. Next up at number seven is R. Kelly. He did some major damage for his career back in 2008 when he made comments about being with underage girls. But this interview came after he went to trial for being accused of child pornography. Kelly was accused of making a 27 minute sex tape with an underage female, but 
after going to trial, the jury declared him not guilty on all 14 counts. People were all feeling some type of way about him, some believed him and some didn't. But his interview after the trial didn't help paint a very good self portrait. During an interview with BET, he was straight up asked, do you like teenage girls? After everything that went on with court, you would think his response would be an immediate no. However, he responded by saying, when you say teenage, how young are we talking? He went on to say that he has some 19 year old female friends, but none that are technically illegal. After the interview was aired on BET, Kelly's team saw it and demanded that it never be shown again. It was already too late though, the damage had already been done. This is not me, y'all. I'm fighting for my life. Y'all killing me with this. I gave y'all 30 years of my and at number 6 is Miles Teller. The actor had a promising career, especially after his role in Whiplash back in 2014. But it was after an interview in 2015 where his career took a hit and began to stall. In August 2015, he did an interview with Esquire and he thought it would be appropriate to tell the female writer and their waitress that the bar glass was modeled after his private parts. He obviously used a much more vulgar term, but I'm definitely not going to repeat it. He was pretty sassy too, trying to demand the writer to cut his meat for him when the their food came. The interview didn't paint the actor in a very positive light and says that things were changed around. After receiving tons of backlash from it, he told a Vulture, I quote, If how that story made me look was how I really was, I'd think I was the biggest douchebag too. I know who I am and it's not who I was in that story. Since then he hasn't been able to book movies like he used to and has only about 6 credits to his IMDb in the last 4 years. Some of you might not even heard of any of them. Happy through the list at number 5 is The Chainsmokers, another time when a band tried a little too hard to be edgy and just came off as super lame instead. Back in 2016, Billboard did a cover story on the band where they said things that people weren't too thrilled about. Andrew Tagger told the magazine, I quote, We rage every night. My mom's going to hate reading that, but she already knows. But his DJ partner Alex Pals said that they were pros, saying, But you'll never see us getting carried out of a club. We're way too good at drinking. Both band members continued on with the interview and thought it was appropriate to bring up their groupies, even though they both had live in girlfriends at the time. Alex said, Even before success, was number one. And then Andrew chimed in saying, Like, why am I trying to make all this money? I wanted to hook up with hotter girls. I had to date a model. We're just frat bro dudes, you know what I mean? The loving ladies and stuff. And drum roll, please, for the worst part of the entire interview, the boys also revealed the size of their private, saying that they measured from tip to tip. Classy. Here we are at number four with Gary Coleman. The actor sadly passed away at just 42 years old, so this is in no way to disrespect him, but to share what happened leading up to his very controversial death. The actor always had medical issues, but often didn't like to speak on them. On May 26, 2010, the actor fell down the stairs while at home with his wife and had to go to the hospital after cracking his head. He was treated, but the next day he went unconscious and landed on life support where he died on May 28th. People were suspicious as to what actually happened and rumors began to fly saying that his wife had actually pushed him down the stairs. Now, the only reason that they thought this was because they went to court after she accused him of physically abusing her. The couple was always known for their altercations and even and appeared on the show Divorce Court. This is what led to Gary having an interview that impacted his career in a very negative way. One of the female hosts on The Insider asked him if he abuses his wife, and when he wouldn't flat out deny it, she begins to question if it's true or not. And that's basically when he lost it. He ended up saying to her, I quote, Go F yourself. I don't know you. I don't care about you. Your life doesn't matter to me. If you get hit by a bus tonight, I'm not going to care. There is no abuse that goes on in my house. Now, if people believe that I'm waffling, then they can go do what they Did need to do. Did you abuse your wife? Did you abuse her? Did you lay your hand and on her? And you know what? You can go the same place. Then he storms off the set and tells all of the hosts to go f themselves. People were stunned by his anger and reaction, and he wasn't very well received after that. All right, guys, at number three is Megan Fox. It is no surprise to anyone anymore that her career started to fizzle away after the Transformers incident when she publicly bashed the director. In 2009, Fox told Wonderland that the director of the film series, Michael Bay, is, I quote, like Napoleon, and he wants to create this insane, infamous madman reputation. He wants to be like Hitler on his sets, and he is. She went on to call him a nightmare to work with 
with and said that he has no skills at all. As a result from her interview remarks, she was fired from Transformers Dark Side of the Moon and was only booking smaller roles and cameos. It wasn't until she later apologized to Bay that she was allowed back in the director's blockbuster movies, which is how she got to start in his Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle franchise. However, Bay told GQ it was actually Steven Spielberg who demanded that he hire Fox and added that she may not have been the most professional actress on set. I thought Michael Bay was someone you don't want to be on bad terms with, but if the real issue is Steven Spielberg, that's even worse. In at number two is Charlie Sheen. He has a list of things that all play a factor on why his career came to an end. One of them was his ridiculous and totally inappropriate behavior during his interview with ABC when he confessed to still being on drugs. Actually, when he asked if he still uses drugs, his exact response was, I am on a drug. It's called Charlie Sheen. It is not available. If you try it once, you will die. Your face will melt off and your children will weep over your exploded body. He went on to talk about sleeping with prostitutes and said that they are the best at what they do and has no problem admitting that part of his sex life. The entire interview is manic and whack, but no one could ever forget his famous line when asked about how he survived his huge drug binges. He responded with, I have tiger blood in my veins. Since then, it's been an ongoing joke, along with his career. However, rumor has it that he has sobered up and it's possible he will be making a comeback. Taking the number one spot on our list is Tara Reid, only because it was so shocking. The sweet blonde shocked the world after showing up drunk to an interview, or so it appeared. Back in August 2018, she did an interview with Today Extra on Australia's Channel 9 to promote her movie The Last Sharknado. But throughout the interview, she was slurring her words, spoke very quietly, and often just trailed off. When you watch it, there's moments when you feel like she might actually fall asleep. It really makes sense from the first one. It, it really does it. It makes a com like complete circle. And After the interview, rumors started that she was drinking again, which was a problem from her past. She released a statement afterwards, not giving any kind of reasoning for her weird behavior, but insisted that people have no reason to worry about her health. However, people were still very much worried. Okay, that is our list for today. Hit that thumbs up button so that I know you enjoyed it, and let me know all your thoughts and feelings down in the comments below. In the meantime, I'm going to end this video by responding to some of your comments from my other video, Top 10 Acts of kindness done by celebrities. Brandon says, I remember helping this handicapped man in a wheelchair up the hill to get to the bus stop. I felt great after that. Honestly, that is so nice of you. It honestly feels so good when you do something nice for others. I love that feeling. Terrence Olive says, who knew that celebrities could be so generous? Good to hear about it without all the fanfare, right? I feel like it's easy to forget that some celebrities are genuinely good people. Corbin Heaton says, top 10 beyond the screen, do a real Levine. Like a whole video on a real Levine? Do you guys like the 10 things you didn't know series where we pick a celebrity, let us know. Matt Chu says, I've bought clothing for destitute nursing home residents who couldn't afford to buy their own. Nice list. Keep up the great work. Hashtag pay it forward. Honestly, I loved reading through all your acts of kindness, guys. This was probably one of my favorite lists just to read the comments. It just goes to show that there are still good people in this world. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. Subscribe, like, comment below, do all of the things. And if you want to keep watching more beyond the screen videos, just stay on this screen right here. You can click the icon that'll be here, right over here when I stop talking. I'm your host Joss and I will see you next time.